Hey, today we're going to spend some time and talk to you about the Rogers High Fidelity uh, Transformer, Power Transformer designs, and why they're so special, and why it makes your Rogers High Fidelity amplifier sound so good. The first thing that's important, that we'll talk about is why is the power transformer important? Power transformer is important because the power transformer is the key element of the power supply in your amplifier. And in order for the amplifier to deliver transient response, meaning large amounts of power in short periods of time, the power supply has to have large overcapacity. And some of us in the industry like to call that headroom, okay, but it has to have a significant overcapacity beyond the output ratings of the amplifier. So in the case of the EHF 200, we have an amplifier that is rated at 200 watts peak, or 120 watts RMS per channel. However, the power supply in this amplifier, which compri is comprised of this transformer, is an 1800 watt power supply, or a 1.8 kilowatt power supply. So significant headroom over and above the RMS output, maximum RMS output, mind you, of the amplifier. So why do we, why is that important to us? Because when the amplifier can produce transient power, tremendous amounts of power in short periods of time over broad frequency ranges, the amplifier sounds musical. People enjoy the sound of an amplifier that has good transient response. So let's talk a little bit about how we would measure that transient response. Here we have a setup. <clears throat> it's a basic setup for the EHF 200 evaluation. And we use the Audio Precision, the latest in the digital measurement equipment, Audio Precision test equipment. Okay, And these are the oscilloscopes that are set up on the amplifier. And these two scopes show you the input and output waveforms, this being the subwoofer output, this being the main output. The input signal we chose to use for this evaluation is a square wave. It's a 2 kilohertz square wave. So if you look at the input signal, the rise time on the waveform is very sharp. It's got large numbers of octaves or harmonics in it, well outside of the human hearing range, well above the 2 kilohertz fundamental frequency. And that's what gives it the sharp rise time or high transients in the square wave. So this is how we measure the transient response. Now if we look at the output, obviously it's a much larger signal because the amplifier is at its maximum output. But the reproduction of that square wave through the amplifier, the input versus the output, shows again reproduction of those very steep rises on the square wave, meaning that the amplifier is producing power across all those octaves and all those harmonics, which will allow it to sound musical. And if you notice on the upper scope here, this is the subwoofer output, it's got some rounded edges on it. And the reason I point that out to you is, on the subwoofer output, we actually filter the output. Everything above one kilohertz, we roll off because you don't want to drive a subwoofer with lots of out-of-band energy. So we designed the amplifier, and it actually has a special tap on the output transformer for the subwoofer output. And if you'll notice, what's the first thing you see? Lack of rise time as compared to the main output. So the output transient response is somewhat limited on the subwoofer output because the subwoofer output focuses only on 100 hertz and below. But our main output goes to 200 kilohertz, so you can see the tremendous harmonic production, giving it a very good transient response. So again, most important, one of the most important components in the amplifier is the power transformer, and we have a custom-made power transformer. We custom design, custom wind our transformer for the EHF 200 and EHF 100. And just for comparison's sake, we'll come back to this. This is a traditional power transformer. We call it an EI core transformer, meaning that the core is made up of laminate steel structures 
in the shapes of the letter E and I. Very traditional transformer. You'll see it in a lot of competitive amplifiers. It's a good transformer, and we use it in some applications. However, the toroidal transformer that we use, and, and significantly larger, much larger, um, this transformer weighs in excess of 10 pounds. And we use a toroidal design because the toroidal design constrains the magnetic field in the transformer. And that constrained magnetic field actually reduces the noise in the amplifier. So we've got a significantly lower noise floor with a toroidal transformer than if we'd use a traditional EI core transformer. So again, it's a very special design, broad bandwidth, toroidal core transformer. The other thing to point out, not only the weight and the heft of this unit, this, this transformer is wound with solid copper wire with silver plating. Same as all the wiring in our amplifier. We use a military standard wire that the transformer is wound with and then taken out. And the wire leads exiting the transformer are Teflon coated. We've talked about this before in previous videos. The reason we want Teflon wire is it resists heat and aging. They're the two real enemies of Class A amplifiers. Is heat, because they tend to be inefficient amplifiers. They generate a lot of heat. But that's what gives us the Class A performance we love. And that heat accelerates aging of the wiring and of the components. So we use mil-spec components and mil-spec wire, and that resists the aging. I guarantee you, as a matter of fact, a lifetime guarantee you, that when you open this amplifier 20 years from now, this wire will look like the day we built the amplifier. And we demonstrated that in the other heat video, the other wire video. Again, it's a custom wound transformer. We make it specially for the EHF 200 amplifier, and, our, and we'll be introducing it in some newer products. And it's evaluated on all the latest audio precision and electronic testing.